Hey folks, Daniel from the Prisma team here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to migrate a database running on MySQL RDS to PlanetScale using their import service. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna import a project that is already deployed to Vercel built with Next.js and Prisma. And we're gonna switch the database without downtime from AWS RDS to PlanetScale. And so let's dive right in. Let's get started by taking a look at the code base for this project. As I mentioned, this is a Next.js project that is deployed to Vercel. And here we have the repository for this. In fact, we can look at the Prisma schema here. And uh, we have an AMA uh, model that maps onto a table and that uh, stores our questions for this Ask Me Anything app. Um, you can take a look at what the app looks like here. It's deployed to Vercel. And here I have some of the unanswered questions. These I can see because I'm logged in. And here we have all of the answered questions below. And of course we can go and we can, I can uh, edit an answer and I can save that and so on. So that was the app. Now we're gonna take a look at how this migration is going to work because as I mentioned, the database that it's currently relying on is on AWS RDS. So let's take a look at some of the changes when migrating from RDS to uh, planet scale. One of the main differences between MySQL and planet scale is that planet scale doesn't support foreign keys. And the reason for that is because it doesn't actually support this referential integrity that MySQL typically gives you. So what is referential integrity? Well, referential integrity is a feature given to you by a database like MySQL. And what it is, ensures is it ensures that relations actually have valid um, foreign keys. So for example, if you have a user table and a post table and you have some posts that are pointing to a user, uh, referential integrity will ensure that you can only have rows in your database that are actually pointing to a valid user. And so with Prisma, we need to uh, essentially disable this uh, foreign keys and, and this referential integrity. Um, and we can do that using this preview feature flag. So in order to do that, I'm going to first enable the preview feature referential integrity. And then for the data source, I'm going to uh, set the referential integrity to be set to Prisma. Typically it's set to foreign keys, which means uh, this responsibility is delegated to the database. Of course, with planet scale, we can't do that. So we set that to Prisma. And what Prisma will do is it will essentially emulate that functionality on the Prisma layer. So for example, if you delete a user and it has related posts, you can configure through Prisma to delete those related uh, rows in the posts table. And so we're gonna do this to the MySQL database. We're gonna create a migration locally and then deploy that to our production database. And uh, what I expect that the migration will do is it'll essentially just remove the foreign key constraint and that will allow us to um, essentially import our database from MySQL into PlanetScale using their import service. So now I've defined this referential integrity and if I go into the terminal, and I use the Prisma migrate dev command, it'll ask me to create a new migration and I'm gonna call this remove F keys. And we can see that that's been executed. If we take a look at the SQL for this, uh, we have that here and this is the migration and essentially all it did is it dropped those foreign keys. Okay, now that we've run this against our local development database, we can go ahead and run that against the production database. And for that, I'm going to, away from uh, your ability to see, I'm gonna change the connection string, the database URL inside my uh, environment variables. I'm gonna change that to be the production database so that we can carry out that migration. Okay, I've updated my environment variables file and we can go back into the terminal now and uh, now we can do the migrate deploy. This will actually run this migration that we just created against the production database. If I do that, and there we see that this remove foreign keys migration has been applied to production. 
Great, so we're almost ready to import our database now into PlanetScale. There's a couple more things that we're going to look into, specifically some configuration that is specific to um, PlanetScale so that it can actually um, import your MySQL database. And so let's take a look at that in my browser here. I'm going to go into the RDS management uh, console and I'm going to look at the parameter groups. And there's a couple of parameters that need to be configured for you to be able to import your database, your MySQL database into PlanetScale. And the first one is GTID. And you can see that here it's been set to on. That should be set to on. And then the second thing that needs to be configured for this database is um, the amount of time for the uh, bin log. So I will show you in a moment. Let's get this loading. Great. And this is it. So this backup retention period should be set to at least three days. Um, if it's set to zero days, the import will actually fail. So that's been already set for us. We ran the migration to remove the foreign keys. Let's go ahead now and try to import that into PlanetScale. Let's begin the import service. First, we go to PlanetScale, we log in, and then we click on the import. And we're going to name the database Prisma AMA. We'll set the region to Dublin. And here I'm going to paste in the host name for the database. AMA is the name of the database. We're going to prefer SSL. Put the credentials in. And now we're going to connect to the database. Great. PlanetScale was able to successfully connect. Let's begin the database import. So now it's going to start performing the import into PlanetScale. And the way that this works is it's uh, essentially a three-stage process. In the first stage, it performs the initial import. And then it enters the second stage in which the PlanetScale database will be a replica, a read replica, that is. That means that any change that is written to the MySQL database will automatically be replicated to PlanetScale. Finally, in the primary mode, when we switch it to primary mode, what will happen is the roles will reverse and uh, the MySQL database will then become a read replica and PlanetScale will become the uh, primary node from which the changes are replicated back to AWS, RDS, that is. So let's get that going and um, wait for it to be ready. Okay, the initial import succeeded, and now the PlanetScale database is in replica mode, which means it's replicating all of the changes from MySQL. To verify this, let's add the PlanetScale database to the Prisma data platform so we can look using the data, data browser to make sure that all of our changes are replicated. And for that, I'm going to generate a password here. I'm going to copy it over. I'm going to go to the Prisma data platform. And here I have a single environment set up. I'm going to create a new environment. And let's wait for this to load. I'm going to call this production planet scale. And I'm going to paste in a connection string, the same connection string that we got from planet scale and create the environment. Okay, that's great. And now that our environment has been selected, let's look again at all of the environments and look at the production planet scale. And we should be able to see here, so we have 12 AMA questions, the same that we expect to see in production. That is the MySQL database. So indeed, here we have two. And if I go ahead and I create test while recording, I've submitted that. If I go back into the data browser and I reload this, I should expect to see a new question. And there we have it. We have 13. 
And if I order it by created at, we should be able to see it here. There we go, testing while recording. Now we wanna make sure that it also has been replicated to the planet scale database. So we'll switch over to planet scale. And here too, we expect to see 13 records and indeed there we have them. I've sorted it by created at, and there we have it testing while recording. So great. So now we have planet scale replicating our changes and we have this also set up uh, on the Prisma data platform so we can see both databases in action. As a next step, we're going to update the database URL environment variable for uh, the production deployment on Vercel. And we're gonna update that to the planet scale database URL that we've copied before. So I'm gonna go here into the settings, environment variables, and uh, here we have the database URL. And we also have the production Prisma client engine type, which we're going to update to not use the data proxy to just connect directly to planet scale. So first thing is we can update that to library. We can save that and also go ahead and update the production URL. And this is based on the same connection string that we got from planet scale. So we can save that. Now that we've updated these environment variables, these won't actually come into effect until the Vercel app is redeployed. So. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually switch over the planet scale into primary mode and uh, then we'll redeploy the app so that the changes uh, are then applied to the deployed app. And for that, we're going to go back here into planet scale. We're going to enable primary mode. And once we enable that, uh, writes will no longer succeed to the read replica. And uh, now that we've done that, okay, so now basically planet scale is replicating the changes back to uh, the external database. And that means we can go ahead and uh, redeploy uh, the last production deployment. So redeploy, I'm gonna not include the build cache just to make sure that it's uh, rebuilding everything from scratch. And um, let's wait that for that to finish. Okay, our build finished. Let's check it out and make sure that everything is working as correctly. For that, we'll open up the data browser with the uh, planet scale environment set up and we'll also open up the uh, app and we'll try to just submit a new question. I've submitted that and now if I reload here, I should expect to see it at the bottom because this is ordered by created at and there we have it. In fact, if I go probably to the production, it will be replicated back. At least I expect it to. And here we have it, new post migration. So we can see that uh, now the changes are syncing back to the MySQL database. But of course, we want to decommission that MySQL database. So I can actually go back to planet scale and do the finish import. What that will do is it will basically detach from the MySQL on uh, AWS RDS and the changes will no longer be replicated back to it. And that's okay because we're happy now with um, planet scale. So I'll finish this import now. And there's a couple more notes related to how the code runs and how migrations run uh, with Prisma and PlanetScale. It's slightly different. Um, and uh, let's take a look at that. So uh, going back to our code base, if we open up the package JSON, you might see that we have quite a bit of uh, scripts here that are built so that we can run these migrations uh, upon deployment. This will no longer work now that we're using planet scale. And this is because migrations with planet scale, they are done using a different workflow. So we can no longer just create these migrations and run them uh, when we deploy, um, at least not using Prisma migrate in the same style that you're used to. Uh, and so the first thing that we want to do is we want to remove this prod migrate deploy from the build script because we no longer want to do that. We just want to run Prisma generate and then next build. Um, and I think that should be it. Yes. So now that we've 
Done that, we can save those changes. Um, and um, that should be it. Yes, I think we can also remove this Prisma Migrate Deploy script that we have here. And in a follow-up video, I'm going to go into more detail about uh, the workflows of using Prisma together with PlanetScale um, and, and go into more detail into the branching workflow um, for PlanetScale. All right, let's summarize what we did today. Essentially, what we did is we made this app fully serverless. Both the uh, runtime is serverless using Vercel and now we're using also planet scale. So this app is fully serverless. It scales down to zero cost when there's no traffic. And uh, how did we do this migration? So the first thing that we did, and I have the steps recapped here, you can also find them in the source code repository for this. We did a quick walkthrough through the code. We looked at some of the uh, planet scale specific uh, changes that needed to be happen, uh, specifically setting referential integrity to Prisma, creating a migration, and then applying that on production so that there aren't any foreign keys. That allowed us to then start this uh, import uh, process. Um, we also added the uh, planet scale database to the Prisma data platform and using the data browser, we were able to quickly navigate and compare the two databases and see the changes replicate from one to the other. We then went ahead and uh, set planet scale database as the primary one and also updated the environment variable, the database URL that is on Vassil so that it actually connects to planet scale. And that was it. We redeployed to make sure that uh, the environment variable um, is actually applied, um, which required a new deployment. And uh, that was it. Now our app is fully serverless and running and the migration was successful. If you do have any questions about this process, please feel free to share it in, your, in the comments and uh, uh, be sure to stay tuned. We're going to do a follow-up uh, video where we're going to cover up uh, some of the workflows when it comes to migrations using Prisma and PlanetScale. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.